Motion is the essential ingredient of life. In everyday life, we observe different types of motion. Motion could be linear, that is along a straight line. Motion could also be circular. The planets in solar system move in nearly circular paths. So is the case of satellites around the Earth. I'm sure you must have enjoyed swimming when you were a child. It moves back and forth about a mean position. What type of motion do you think it is? Let us now look at this wall clock. Its pendulum moves back and forth about a mean position. Such a motion is called as oscillatory motion. Oscillatory motion is a universal phenomenon. It is observed in all heavenly bodies as pulsation of stars, skyscrapers, hanging bridges, as well as in the motion of atoms in matter. The simplest type of oscillatory motion is simple harmonic motion. In a physics laboratory, you can observe this motion through a number of arrangements. Let us look carefully at some of these. You must be thinking that all these are diverse systems, but there is some commonality in them. Can you imagine what is that? To answer this question, let us recall the characteristics of simple harmonic motion which you have studied in Block 1, Unit 1 of your physics course on oscillations and waves. The restoring force is linearly proportional to the displacement. The restoring force is always directed towards equilibrium position and is opposed to displacement. To understand how displacement varies with restoring force, let us visit Center for Development of Physics Education at Rajasthan University, Jaipur and meet Professor Salaf. I have here a arrangement to make a measurement on its displacement as a function of the force that you may apply to, uh, to displace it from its mean position. And I use this 
pen on which I can put different kind of loads and measure a displacement. Let us see what happens when Professor Saraf has added one of these weights. You must have observed that the pointer has displaced by one division. What do you expect could happen if more weights are added? If we add more weights, the pointer will continue to show an increase in displacement. To quantify this relationship, let us plot a graph between displacement and restoring force which is equal in magnitude to the applied force. What do you observe? The graph is a straight line passing through origin. This suggests that restoring force and displacement are linearly related. You can write F proportional to D or F is equal to minus KD where K is the constant of proportionality. If we now remove these weights one by one, the displacement begins to decrease linearly. In this relation, we have used a negative sign. Do you know its significance? It tells us that force and displacement are oppositely directed. To understand this, let us see what happens when the thread holding the pan is burned. As the thread is burned, the displacing force is removed and the pointer moves towards the equilibrium position. From this we can say that the restoring force makes the pointer move towards the mean position. It is of magnitude equal to the displacing force just before the thread was burnt and is directed opposite to it. You will discover that these conclusions are valid for all the diverse systems we displayed in the beginning. Any system exhibiting these characteristics is said to execute simple harmonic motion. This is described by the equation xt is equal to a naught sine omega naught t plus phi naught, where xt is displacement at time t, a naught is amplitude of oscillation, omega naught is angular frequency, and phi naught is the initial phase. We have now learned that the motion is simple harmonic when the restoring force is linearly proportional to the displacement. The restoring force is always directed opposite to the displacement. Let us now re-examine the motion of systems that we considered in the beginning. The oscillations seem to die out. But why does this happen? This happens because every oscillating system loses energy due to damping. To understand as to what is damping and how it influences oscillations, we go back to Professor Saraf's lab. Here is a simple example in which the oscillator is uh, first disturbed, made to oscillate with a certain amplitude. We have an arrangement to measure its amplitude. And we can measure 
the amplitude after a certain specific number of uh, oscillations. In this apparatus, Professor Sarraf has built in an arrangement to change damping. Let's make this arrangement to oscillate. The initial amplitude of oscillation is 8 divisions. Let us see how this amplitude of oscillations changes with time and count the number of oscillations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You must have observed, after 20 complete oscillations, the amplitude has dropped to 6 divisions. Now let us change the direction of this aluminum sheet and again make the same measurements. Let's keep the amplitude of oscillations equal to 8 divisions and count 20 oscillations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. The pointer now shows four divisions. The amplitude of oscillation has decreased due to the interaction of the plate with air. You can change the damping by putting this plate in some viscous liquid or by connecting it to an electromagnet. When the damping is small, the motion is described by the equation xt is equal to a0 exponential minus bt cos omega dt plus phi0. Graphically, we can depict this motion as We may now conclude that damping causes wasteful loss of energy. As a result, the amplitude of oscillations decreases. But in the case of a wall clock, the oscillations don't seem to die out. This is because we have compensated for the loss of energy by using a dry cell. In case of a swing, the effect of damping is offset by the child when he feeds energy to the system by pushing his feet against the ground. Professor Seraf has constructed an oscillator which has constant amplitude of oscillation. The arrangement which compensates for damping consists of a magnet which enters a current carrying coil. As this magnet enters the coil, due to electromagnetic induction, an induced EMF is produced. An EMF or voltage signal is fed to an amplifier connected to another coil which applies push or pull on the magnet. As a result, the oscillations are maintained. One specific use of a maintained oscillator is in the phenomenon of resonance. Two systems are said to be in resonance when the frequency of the driver exactly matches the natural frequency of the oscillating system. The occurrence of such a phenomenon was first explained by Galileo. Resonance finds great use in radio and TV signal transmission and reception, medical diagnosis and research. In your laboratory course, you will make use of this phenomenon in establishing the relation between wavelength and frequency using a sonometer. 
Felwyn Barton, a 19th century physicist, researchers at CDPE have designed a system of 50 pendulums to study resonance phenomenon. Let us know about it from Professor Saraf. There are two components of it and both of them can oscillate with a different time period or different frequency. Here we have a system of 50 pendulums and this system we call Barton's pendulum. Now before I show you a demonstration of this phenomena, I should explain to you how these pendulums are driven by the, by the driver system. To explain to you, here I have a pendulum which is I can suspend from my hand. And if you displace it from one side, then it will start oscillating. This is the standard way we make an oscillator, a pendulum oscillate. But I can make it move in another way, by moving my hand periodically from the top, I can build up amplitude and I can make it oscillate. This is really the principle which we are using here to make all these 50 pendulums driven by an oscillatory system. It will be interesting for you to look through this uh, mirror which gives you the end view of it and you can see how the response, uh, how the pendulums are building up in their oscillations. What do you find? You find some pendulums have responded very uh, little, that, so to say they are building up their uh, oscillations to a very small amplitude. Some of them have responded in a big way. They have built up a big amplitude also. Now, the interesting thing that you find is that the group of pendulums which are responding with a large amplitude are the one whose time period is very close to the uh, time period of the driver system and this is what we call resonance. We have seen how a group of pendulums responds when one frequency is imposed. What will happen if we impose two frequencies on the system? You are now looking at the response of all the 50 pendulums when they are made to oscillate under the influence of two oscillators. Rather, two frequencies are imposed on the system.
resonance can be disastrous at times. Its manifestation was observed when a suspension bridge in UK broke down while the army was marching past in rhythm. Since then, soldiers are told to break the steps while crossing the suspension bridge. In 1940, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington State collapsed due to wind-driven resonance. We have now learned that the motion is simple harmonic when the restoring force is linearly proportional to the displacement. The restoring force is always directed opposite to the displacement. Damping causes wasteful loss of energy. As a result, the amplitude of oscillations decrease. Two systems are said to be in resonance when the frequency of the driving force exactly matches with the natural frequency of the oscillating system. In this program, we considered independently oscillating systems that in nature the systems are generally coupled. In our next program, you will learn the effect of coupling on harmonic oscillations.